Morning. Morning, Ken. How are you? Good. Yourself? Good. All right. You took over a team that was uh, 25th the last four years. You've gone 12th, 11th, 11th, and 6th with five playoff series. Are you are you happy with the, the course and direction that you're going, or where are you at right now coming off the heels of the series loss against Vegas? How oh, am I? Um, I've got an empty feeling. I think anytime you feel that your team... Um, can go on a, a long playoff run and you don't go as long as you, um, you know, you don't go to the end, you're disappointed. Um, so it's an empty feeling, but I also know as a manager, you get to have an empty feeling for like 36 hours and then you got to get back at it. We're doing, you know, I've been doing exit interviews. Um, I, I, I feel, I don't know if goods are, you, you know, we're, we had a good regular season. Uh, we had we had high hopes, high expectations, and uh, we had a disappointing finish. We didn't uh, we didn't we didn't get the job done. Obviously, we got beat by a better team, a team that finished ahead of us in the standings by two points, um, and they beat us head to head in a two week two week tournament. So, uh, not good enough. Um, the goals obviously is to win the Stanley Cup, and um, when you don't win the Stanley Cup, it's a disappointing year. Ken, so here. Um, you look at that roster you put together, and it was an exceptional roster, and, and it was a Stanley Cup contender, but you, in, in hindsight, you look at that, and you think, I should have tweaked this, I should have tweaked this, or were you happy with what you presented in, in, in the playoffs? Uh, um, you know, I think, you know, I guess I got 30 years to reflect on, because we, we, did, we did all this in, in, in Detroit, Two times over, really, um, with with, and you know, so you know, one year, one year you don't go as far as you. It's not like you 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 change the whole team. You know, the the team that won the Stanley Cup in Detroit in 08 was very similar to the team that lost in the first round to Edmonton in 06. It's it's being in those situations over and over. I think I've said this um, the year at the press conference when I get, you got to be in there year after year after year and after year after year after year. And, you know, I like to think in Detroit we were a cup legitimate cup contender 15 16 years we won four like you don't win 12 or four, you know like it's hard to win one so you've got to be in there year after year after year after year and I think that you know last year we got in we lost in the final four to a team that anytime you lose to somebody in my opinion they're better than you are you've had a chance to beat them and you don't beat them it's so Colorado was better than we were um and they went on and won the Stanley Cup Vegas was better than we were um and Part of this is going to be, you know, over the next um, six to eight weeks, you know, tweak, tweak, tweak around with the team. I think the, 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 the key pieces, uh, for the most part, I think they're here, or they're they're, they're going to, you know, and they, we've got to we've got to we've got to grow some younger people, um, and we've got to try to put ourselves go through all this process, same position a year from now. And try again, and, and and keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. Uh, Ken, you uh, talked about you can only really feel bad for about thirty six hours, and you got to get to the work next. Season. Um, you talked about tweaking the roster uh, going forward, but how how much is you know the cap going to be an issue? How much like math are you already doing in your head when it comes to the cap? Um, everybody's dealing with the cap, so we're not dealing with anything that. Um, anybody else is um is the, is the cap uh, is a challenge yeah but that's sort of what that's 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 my job um is to try to build the best team you can within the cap system um i think it's been great for the national hockey league because um there's there's you know there was a time when when i when maybe there was only Six, seven, eight, nine teams that could win the Stanley Cup. Now there's there's anybody that makes the playoffs can win the Stanley Cup. So it's 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 added to the com the competitive balance. So it's 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 created a level, but that's that's the good and the bad. And you know, you, the, you know, so at the end of the day, do we have to make some some decisions? Yep, but we're not the only team that has to make those decisions. 
Ken, I just wanted to ask about your, yourself personally, and um, you know, you're in, entering the last year of your contract. What what's the future hold for you? Would you like to continue to be the general manager, and you can seek an extension? Well, I've got a year to go on my contract. Um, for me, uh, it's unfinished business. Um, I, I, I plan to honor my contract. Um, beyond that, you know, at, at this stage of my life, I, I don't invest in green bananas. Just not sure if I'm going to be around long enough to see them ripen to be yellow. Um, so, but but certainly I've got, you know, I, I, I cracked the joke, but, you know, I, 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 I feel... You know, and you be the guy that, you know, since year one that I was here, you would say, you know, when are you going to trade a first-round pick? When are you going to trade a first-round pick? When are you going to trade a first-round pick? And uh, I trade a first-round pick when I believe that it's, that it's, we're there. We're there. And obviously, I traded two first-round picks at the deadline to bring in Ekholm. Um, I believe the time is now. I believe... We have a really good team. I believe there's lots of really good teams around the National Hockey League. We're not the only good team around the National Hockey League. But I believe that over, as Bob just said, you know, we've gone 12th, 11th, 11th, 6th. Um, you you want to be good in the playoffs, you got to be good in the regular season. You just, you, you, you can't be in one year, miss one year, be in one year, miss one year, get in and be the eighth seed and think you're, you're going to win the Stanley Cup. You got to be, you got to, you got to, you want to win in the playoffs, you got to win in the regular season. Um, and I think we're, 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 we're building that. Some young people are starting to, you know, you look at Stu Skinner being a 24-year-old goaltender. Um, just actually just met with McLeod, a 23-year-old center iceman. We've got some young people that are, um, these are great experiences for them to, to hopefully be ready next year to um, go all the way. I don't like bananas, so I, I appreciate that reference. <laughs> um, Evan Bouchard, he had a really great, you know, last quarter or whatever the season, and then the playoffs, he went to another level. He needs a new contract. Thinking bridge for him, or would you like to try, ideally, to get him signed even longer? Well, a contract's got to work. Obviously, i got to talk to his agent. Um, I, I think, obviously, th that question over there, um, we, he's getting a raise. There's no doubt he's getting a raise. Um, there's, Stu Skinner's already got a raise. He's gone from 750 to 2.6. So these are all factors in as as to the, to my decision. So I don't know if it's a bridge or not. I got to talk to his agent. I've got my thoughts. I don't want to negotiate in the uh, in the in the paper. Um, takes two to tangle, and um, we'll find a solution. Ken, just just to clarify on Daniel's first question, uh, do you intend on being back in both roles, like the general manager? Do you want to sort of your hands on the wheel as the GM next season? For the 23-24 season? Yeah. I do. So if you're uncertain about, you know, what happens after that, not many organizations go into a year uncertain of who their GM might be the following year. So is there a process that's undertaken to kind of figure out what the next stage will be, who that next general manager might be, and is that is that an important process this year? Or are you part of that? Uh, I mean, to tell you the honest truth, I've been really thought about it. Um, you know, I guess you know Ryan. When I came here, you know, I signed a five-year contract. Um, my belief in my own abilities. And my, my experience was to try to come um, and make a difference in a positive way. Um, some people might decide it's been a negative way. <laughs> but um, I wake up every day and look in the mirror like everybody else. And, you know, I kind of judge myself. And I'm as hard on myself as anybody. Um, you know, I've gone through four years. I've got a year to go. Um... I've got nine grandchildren, um, f four children. Um, I've still got a lot of ton of energy, ton of passion. Um, the last time that I was the general manager of a Stanley Cup championship team was 2008. That's a player's lifetime. I think that's going to be 16 years ago. Um, I would love to um, do that one more time. I think we've got a group of players and a team that 
it can happen, um, but it doesn't just happen. Um, and, you know, so beyond that, I haven't really, haven't really kind of thought. Certainly, they're telling me, I don't really, I'm not on social media, so I got people here telling me, oh, there's this going on and that going on, and there's this speculation and that speculation. I'm not sure where all the speculation comes from. Um, I'm enjoying the job. I'm enjoying the challenge. Um, massively, massively, massively disappointed that we didn't go farther. Um, but I also have a total respect for Vegas. They beat us. They, they, they had more points than we did over 82 games. We got our opportunity to play them head-to-head -head over a two-week tournament, and they won four and we won two. I've been around the National Hockey League a long time. I know how hard it is to win, and they won, and we didn't. Um, but I also know that we've got, in my opinion, a, a hell of a hockey team. Um, most of those players in that locker room are in the prime of their career. Um, so it's not like we're going away. You know, and, and the team is an old team. I've, I've managed some old teams in, 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 in Detroit. Um, the core is at the prime of their career. Um, I, I, I feel good that, that some of the younger players have started to kind of pitch in in a bigger way than they maybe did two years ago. But I think that's evolution, that's growth, that's a, that's a, that's a good thing. So for me personally, um, I think I've, hopefully that's answered. I'm, I'm enjoying the challenge. Uh, I got a year to go. I've got unfinished business. Um, and I know that the next um, eight weeks are every year are key weeks. You know, these are, I'm, I'm, we're making decisions now that are, that, are, that are building the team for September in 23. And we had talked about Bouchard and McLeod's a restricted free agent and Costin's a restricted free agent. And I've got, uh, I've got um, built in raise there with Stu Skinner. And certainly the cap's going from 82.5 to 83.5. I know I've got a little bit of money coming off there. Lucic is now coming off that 750. I know they got the 1.5 from Sekera that was on the buyout so there's one you know the cap's going up one there's one five on Sekra there's 750 on uh, on Lucic so there's what three and a quarter so you're pecking away but I, I do know that there's some real difficult decisions that have to be made but um, we're not the only team I'm not the only organization that's got to make uh, uh, difficult cap decisions most or many of the elite teams, uh, not elite teams, the teams that are, you know, we were sixth overall, M many of these teams, not everybody, but lots of teams are in the same boat that I, that, that we're in. Um, and I'm going to go through the process, you know, this, this week it's exit interviews with all the players, uh, spent all yesterday morning for about four or five hours with the, with the coaches, I'll meet with Jay again, you know, the pro, the pro scouts, uh, you know, and, and be ready to get into the, go into the draft week and, um, you know, last year obviously went to the draft, made a made a decision to trade Zach Cassian and freed up some cap space. And then you go through July first, and it's the same. It's about the twenty seventh time I have twenty eighth time I've had to do this. So uh, I kind of know the process, and I, I know I know the challenges. I know the way the way it works, um, and we'll we're going to make all those decisions and be ready to roll in September. Uh, Ken, after listening to all that, uh, how do you see the, the role of Steve Steos evolving within the organization? Um, I think Steve could, you know, this when he we came on board this year, um, he did player development and because we didn't really have anybody there. And he, and he kind of um, also, we, we didn't have a, an Ontario scout. So certainly we would like to hire an Ontario scout. I think that's, that Steve should do more of the things that an assistant general manager does. Um, what is an assistant general, you know, there's different assistant general managers, different roles. Um, Keith Gretzky's assistant general manager, um, really responsible for Bakersfield. He's there every day and I want, I think it's important that that, that team wins, that, that our young players get an opportunity, but they're also not entitled. Um, and he's there on an everyday basis working with the coach. Um, 
Bill Scott's an assistant general manager, um, does all the, he works with me on all the, you know, the, the capology and, 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 and the contracts and, and, and the business of, of, of hockey. And then I've got, you know, my son Brad runs the pro scouting and, 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 and does all that information. So the one other thing that an assistant general manager can do, they go to games. They go to, they go to games and, um, you know, I, I'm going to bring up a couple of names. I don't know, if I, you know, because I come from Detroit. Pat Verbeek, what Pat Verbeek did for Steve Eiserman when 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 he worked for Steve, and now I saw Sean Horkov. Oh, I I hired Hork to be the uh, director of player development for um, Detroit when I was was there, and now Hork's an assistant manager. Assistant managers go to games. They go to pro games. They go to NHL games. They go to American League games, and he's the right hand man. In, in the decision-making process, or in one of the right-hand men, when you, time to make a trade, time to uh, make decisions on free agency, time to, just to, to that's what Jim Neal did for me in, 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 in Detroit. He, now Jim Neal was more running the, the amateurs, but he was, he was, he was my right, he was my right-hand man, but I had other people that were, were there. So I think for Steve Steos has obviously been, um, a player in the league. He's been a director of player development with Toronto. He's been an assistant coach. He's been behind the bench with Toronto. He took over Hamilton, uh, built them into one of the best junior programs um, in the country. And obviously, being a former Oiler, wanted to come join the Oilers um, and, you know, pitch in and help us have success. But at the same time, um, I think would like to grow as a young executive, and I think that uh, uh, he won't do the same things that he did last year. He'll do more things that I would deem an assistant manager would do. Like I said, like I bring up Sean Horkov and you know Pat Verbeek, who's the, who I hired in 2008 to be a, a pro scout for the um, Red Wings, and left with Steve in 2010 to go to Tampa. So I, th I think he could do that, which would help um, me but it would also help him um, and his career. So Ken, there's a, there's a lot of superstar players on the sidelines uh, this year. They've been survived by teams that kind of throw four lines at you. Is, is that the new model? And, and how does Edmonton get there when the, the top end of their roster is uh, so heavy? Well, I guess I would respond. I, I, I think there's probably four line teams that are out, um, you know, I, I, I'd like to think we were a four-line. I think we had, what, 11 forwards get 10 goals or more this year. Um, and then we added Bukestad, so we really had 12 forwards that had 10 goals or more. Um, I think that... I mean, you guys watch our team. I mean, y you know how good Connor and Leon are. So I think when when you, you get down to... When you get... when. You, they're going to play more. I mean, they're 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 great great players. So, but I do think over 82 games we were a four line team for the most part. I think I mean, for sure we were a three line team. I think that our depth um, up front um, contributed to us being tied for sixth overall and scoring the most goals in the National Hockey League. Now, you know, Connor had 160 points. I'm not blind to that so I, I think you know these games these games at this time of the year are, are decided by you know it's 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 why Detroit couldn't win the cup in 94 95 and 96 and those same group of players won the cup in 97 and 98 it's it's why the group of players they put together in 06 and in, in, in Detroit and and we lost to Edmonton in the first round and lost you know they they won the cup in 08 I mean it, I didn't make I didn't build a new team so I believe that this team that we've got in there is a is but there's other teams that are like us that are out that next year Vegas missed the playoffs last year they're 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 in the final four that's the that's that's the league that's that's the league and you got to stick with it and the differences in these games are moments and I don't know it, it, it's it, 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 you're not beating teams six to one anymore like and I think there was one series here that was a some of those games, but for the most part, you know, Dallas the other night was one nothing in the third period, and then it was two nothing late, and then it's two to one, and it's, you know, we lose four three in game 
five, and it's three goals in, what is it, a minute 49 or something? I mean, I, you know, other than that, the other 58 games, it's kind of, but that's, you gotta, that's why you stick with it. That's why if, if I thought we were a million miles away, I'd be in here talking to you about a rebuild. We're not a million miles away. We're, we're right there. We, we, this, we have a really good hockey team. There's other really good hockey teams on the sidelines. Vegas was a really good team last year that probably got, had bad things going on with injuries, and they got their team together, and they have a real hockey team. They won, they won, they won the West. They had the most points in the West. They're in the final four. They're, they're in the final two, so we got to stick with it. There, there is no magic wand. We, we speak every year about the urgency of trying to get this thing done in, in Connor's window. And now we're, it, it's, things are getting closer. Leon has two years left on his deal. Connor has three. How important are the next two years in ensuring that this, this thing extends beyond two, three years? Well, very important. So I, I traded two firsts at the deadline for Ekholm. Uh, traded a second last year for, for Kulak. Traded lots and lots of picks. Um, signed Evander Kane to a four-year deal. I, I think these are players that have impacted. Like, I don't want you to know, we're, I'm trying. We're trying. Other teams are trying. Like, e That's why it's the Stanley Cup. It's hard. It's hard. Hard. We're there. We're, we're, we're banging away. We're pushing. We're pushing. Our guys came out here. They're, it's, they're devastated. They're devastated. I'm devastated. The fan base is devastated. Why are we devastated? Because we went 14-0-1-1 heading into the playoffs. Did we have the second best record in the National Hockey League behind Boston since, since the first of January, Boston's devastated. It's like teams that are out there, devastated. Like we're 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 devastated. Like we, these guys, these guys, these guys are. I got guys in there telling me they're going to the gym next week. Like they're, they're they're not going on vacation and like they're going to work. Like they're and these other teams are going to work. That's what these NHL players do. They they take a week after the season, they get back in the gym and they go to. And teams that miss the playoffs are devastated. They miss the playoffs. So there are no guarantees and givens and and entitlements because because of this and because of that it's earned it's earned it's earned it's sacrificed it's sticking to the st it's sticking to what you believe and you believe you're good um that's how you become the last team standing and they're devastated. My, my guys are devastated. I mean, they were out here yesterday. I mean, they, they want to win the cup for this city and for themselves. But other, these four teams that are left, they want to do the same thing, you, you know? So it's, 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 we're devastated. My, my, I'm devastated. My coaching staff, we're, we're disappointed. I don't know what, it's, but we're not the only ones. And then and, and I think we've got to, you know, I think that well, we've got some great players and we're supposed to, those great players that we've got are digging in. And, and, and I want you to know I'm digging in. And I want you to know my coaching staff is digging in. And I want you to know every one of my players is digging in. I got Keith Gretzky digging in to, to try to, we get trying to bring our players along. And we've, and you know, we've talked about, we're, we're, we're digging in. But, 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 it, but there's 31 organizations digging in. That's why I told you guys, when you win the Stanley Cup, boy, do you party. Because it's not a one-year quest. It's a lifetime quest. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You can't party enough when you win that thing. It's a party machine because it's so hard to get your hands on. And I want you to know, I want our fans to know, like we're trying. My, our, my players are devastated. Like they're, they talk to me like it's, they're devastated for themselves. They're devastated for the fans. I know the fans are devastated, but I want everyone to know, like we're not the only one, like there's 31 teams that are at different stages that are disappointments. So we're going to get up off the mat here, um, and we're going to get back at it in September, and 
we're going to try to put ourselves back in the same position that we were this year in the playoffs, feeling good and believing, and we're going to try again. Ken, many of your uh, key guys came out here yesterday and talked about the one thing they want to improve on is is limiting the mistakes, making it harder for the opposition. They feel like, in essence, they gifted away too many goals at times. So when you hear that from your players, I'm sure that excites you because lowering goals against five on five has been an issue. As a GM, where's your role in maybe helping? Do you look like, obviously, you brought an echo home. He's defense kind of first type of guy. Will any of your signings or trades be more focused on guys? Offense isn't an issue here. It's defense. Do you, do you kind of have the same mindset as your team, and will that be your approach? I think everybody can play defense. I think 700 players. I, I think it's a commitment. It's a it's a it's a it's a it's a desire. It's a determination. And I think that that the disappointments, the the the, the devastating losses, um, you know, when we lost in the first round to Edmonton in 06, and we won the cup in 08. Like I didn't get 20 different players. Those, uh, I mean, I'd, I'd love to look at the roster, but probably of those 23 guys we were on our roster in, in 06, 18, 19 of them were probably on that team in 08. You, it's, it's the same players just doing some things differently. Like I just can't go out and get a whole bunch of different players. That's not the way, you, you know, Jason, that's not the way you can't go and get a whole bunch of different yeah. players. It's being in these situations over and over and over and over again and understanding as a manager, I got to make a few tweaks and I got to make some changes. I got to make some massive changes. Or as a coach, I got to make some uh, adjustments and I got to maybe mm, do this. Or we're going to change the way we play or a neutral zone this. And every player goes back and looks in the mirror and decides... I got to do this or I got to do that. On a more of a bigger scale picture about the league, um, it's happened a few times with teams, and I know that the fans across the league get upset about LTIR and teams suddenly, you know, being way over come playoff time because they've had a guy who didn't play all year. Vegas would be a recent example of that. Has it been discussed? Uh, do you have any options on, you know, could there be a salary cap you know, in the playoffs, I know you don't get paid, but based on the value of a player, is there a simple one as you got to play a, you know, a game uh, in the regular season at some point? What's your thoughts to try to limit teams um, abusing the LTR only really for the final week? Could Mark Stone have played in a week before? I have no idea. But it does seem fitting that sometimes guys magically are healthy when the playoffs start. My, my feelings today, Jason, are Vegas beat us. Yeah. They, were Vegas, a, but it's they, happened they were a better team. We weren't good enough. We got to be better. Uh, this, this, this team that we've got, I really believe in. I believe in the leadership. I believe in the skill. I believe in the heart. I believe in the character. Uh, LTIR is a story for me for the general manager meetings and whenever they are. Um, we weren't good enough. Not that we weren't good enough talent-wise, but those moments that you're talking about that determined um, the season, um, that's, that's what I care about. That's what I care about right now. So at the end of the day, Vegas played by the rules. Um, they were the better team. I don't want to take anything away from what Vegas did. They beat us over 82 games. And they beat us over a best of, a best of seven games, and they played by the rules. And great job by Kelly McCrimmon and Cassidy and 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 their and their team. Ken, uh, you signed Jack Campbell to a five-year contract. Why was he not good this year, up to his normal standards? And did you bet wrong on Jack Campbell? Um. First off, I think that any time, not any time, uh, quite often players that sign long-term big contracts, you know, big in their biggest contract and they go elsewhere, they feel um, a ton of pressure to, to live up to the contract and it puts a lot of stress on them. Um, 
I know that there's other goalies in the National Hockey League this year that signed big deals a year ago, and year one was a was a, was a tough go, and year two turned out pretty good. Um, I'm believing that year two is going to be pretty good. Uh, and your assessment of the job that Jay Whitcroft did as coach this year? I think he did a. I think he did a great job. I mean, I think that. Um, I mean, I don't know, from the time that he's taken over, Jim, whatever day that was in January last year, we might be top three, top four in the league in terms of winning percentage since he took over. We went to the final four last year. Um, we got beat by a real team. We got beat by a real, like, Vegas is, like, if you come in here and you, you, you guys are thinking that we're supposed to be moving on and we're, we're, supposed, we're supposed to roll over Vegas and just on to the next thing, we get beat by a real hockey team. They've been a real hockey team for for five years. They've been a real program since since they got awarded the expansion franchise. George McPhee's put together, are they not, is it, are they not in the final four, like, the third time in, like, five years? Four, four out of six. Like, you don't fluke that. Like, this is the national, you, can, you might be able to fluke a year can't f so that's a real program that we're playing so at the end of the day what do I think the job that, that Jay Woodcroft I think Jay's done a great job uh, I think he's a great young coach um, and I reflect back on my time when I was a young general manager and probably do some things a little bit differently now than I would at that point in time but that's what that's what experience and I'm sure you as a would might do some things a little bit differently when you were a young Jim Matheson than when you're an old Jim Matheson. So um, I, I think that's 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 what experience gives you. So I think he's a great young coach. He's a great communicator. Uh, has a great relationship with our best with our top players. Um, the players believe in the system. Um, to you know, this year, the first half of the year we. Just, we had we couldn't quite get it going, you know. We, I think we were seven and three the first ten, and then the next thirty, it was we sort of was around. We were around five hundred, and then I thought um, second half of the year we played at a real high level. So what do I think of Jake Woodcroft, or what do I think the job he's did? I think he's did a great job. I think he's a great young coach, um, and we're lucky to have him.